So the other week I pre-ordered the MetaQuest 3, it's Meta's latest mixed reality headset and I came in with little to no expectations because I've never owned a Quest 1 or 2 headset. So when it got delivered on launch day and I put it on for the first time, I was pretty shocked. Hey friends, Andrew here, hope you're well. So in this video, I'll share my review on the MetaQuest 3 from a perspective of someone who hasn't owned the previous Quest headsets, but I've been using the Quest 3 every day since launch and this thing is ridiculous. So on launch day, the Quest 3 came in a box half the size of the Quest 2, which is nice to see. And unboxing these, it's clear why the box is so much smaller. The Quest 3 controllers and headset are slimmer and streamlined as you can see here. And there's now LCD displays that support 120 hertz with essentially 2K resolution per eye. And putting these on for the first time to set them up, I was really impressed with the sharpness and the quality of the displays. Text is really sharp, colors are great, and I can't see any aliasing. So the first thing I did was manually map out the studio space and set some boundaries. Then I booted up the Close Encounters game to put mixed reality and the new cameras to test. And it's actually really good. Like there's a moment when the spaceship slams from the roof right onto my desk and I just had to take a moment to admire just how impressive it all is. And then when I picked up the ray gun thing from the spaceship, I immediately could tell that the new controllers are noticeably reactive and it tracks my hand movements pretty well. But yeah, seriously, this game was one of the coolest little demos straight out of the box. The fuzzballs were jumping around and also even hiding behind my furniture and taking a glimpse out into the space through the broken walls was also really impressive. The headset is also relatively comfortable to wear. There was a session where I wore it for like three hours straight until the battery died and I found it comfortable enough, but I definitely needed to take a break from the headset afterwards. So the biggest new draw card of the Meta Quest 3 is the hugely improved pass-through mode for that mixed reality experience. Tapping twice on the side of the headband switches the headset into full color pass-through mode where you can see your surroundings through the cameras and it's overlay with virtual elements. From my time using it, I think it's done pretty well and things like web browsing, using Instagram, and even Xbox Cloud Gaming is so cool when the giant displays and the user interface is just levitating in your room. Using my hands to pinch and interact with the UI feels awesome too. Going from my real hand in mixed reality to my virtual one in the meta world is just so trippy but also really satisfying. Just don't expect hand tracking to be nearly as responsive as the uh, new Touch Plus controllers which I'll cover in a sec. Unfortunately, pass-through mode does have some serious flaws. Using pass-through mode in darker rooms doesn't work that well. Everything becomes super grainy and almost a low res. And even in well-lit rooms, the cameras and displays are good, but not good enough to have you question which reality you're really in. You'll definitely know that you're looking through a display and it is called pass-through mode after all. Like for example, I can see my phone on the desk, but you're not going to be able to make out the notifications on that phone. And overall, after using the mode for a week, I have to say it feels more like a, like a tech demo of things to come. It's great and I'm really enjoying watching YouTube consuming content through pass-through mode, but there's just not much more to do in this mode, which is disappointing since Quest 3 is marketed as a mixed reality headset on launch, so I was expecting more. But I am really excited to see what we'll get in the future. And one feature I am super excited for is augments. These are spatially aware interactive objects that are always there when you boot the Quest 3 on and off. It's sort of like permanent digital decor you can place around your room that do all sorts of crazy things like adding portals to your home where this could be an entry point to a game or turn your entire ceiling to an outer space cosmos with this. It's incredible. So I've been playing a lot of the Walking Dead Saints and Sinners and the undead world in this game was really convincing and atmospheric with great texture clarity, field of view and the fantastic lighting brings the world, uh, the undead world to life, ironically. <laughs> It runs super well with the new Snapdragon XR2 chip and 8GB of RAM, gives it enough punch to run everything I've played at 120Hz. 
Visually, I think it's almost on par with the PSVR 2, but let's remember that the Quest 3 is just a completely standalone VR device. It runs everything by itself right here, so it makes it that much more impressive. But be warned, VR motion sickness is real, and with games that require movement, uh, like The Walking Dead, you need to ease your way into VR. I got pretty dizzy uh, the first 15 or 20 minutes playing The Walking Dead, which really holds back the entire experience, but hopefully that changes as I get used to it. Pre-launch there were Quest 2 emulation modes to mimic the difference between the older and newer headsets and you can see the significant difference in brightness, contrast and sharpness. Meta claims a 25% improved center sharpness and 50% at the edges of images and honestly it looks about right. But of course the Quest 3 is still not as impressive as other higher end and more expensive uh, VI headsets like the Valve Index or Pmax 8KX. Movement tracking feels pretty great in game too, so the tracking cameras are now pointing diagonally downwards to pick up movements from the torso, elbows, arms and wrists, and basically this translates to really realistic and natural feeling body tracking in VR like wrapping bandages in The Walking Dead. Actually, the Quest 3 has the same tracking volume as the Quest 2, but because the camera placement is in different areas, the areas of tracking has changed. You can see from this picture here, that there's more tracking coverage around the torso and shoulders than the head. And this actually works quite well because Meta came to the conclusion that we don't often hold our hands above our heads for long periods of time, which is probably the right call. Now, the inbuilt speakers on the Quest 3 also makes gaming that much more immersive because the audio is really immersive thanks to the updated spatial sound for brilliant 3D audio. It uses universal HRTF, which is based on sound localization and frequency accuracy. So basically it just maps your ears in certain directions and amplifies that sound towards your ears. And actually that's something that's also used by Apple in the upcoming Vision Pro. But yeah, the speakers are plenty good for all types of uses from movie watching to gaming. So moving on to the Touch Plus controllers, these are really, really good and they need a shout out too. They're sleek, ergonomic, and the chunky outer rings have been removed. In hand, they feel really natural, almost like an extension of your hand. The haptic feedback has been upgraded as well, and it produces this really punchy vibration and feedback thanks to VCM haptics. It's actually quite similar to the DualShock 4 controller, which also uses VCM. There's also now stage two triggers, which means you can pull it once for an action and then pull it harder again for another action. In some ways, it's sort of like Apple's discontinued 3D touch. Unfortunately though, uh, they do use right here, whoop, <laughs> you use right here AA batteries that don't last very long, so you should probably have a stack of AA batteries on hand if you're planning to use the Quest 3 regularly. So $499 now gets you a completely redesigned headset. Inside and out, everything about the headset is miles beyond the MetaQuest 2. It's a really, really good headset that's all functional in one. It's also convinced me that mixed reality could be a thing in the near future. I can see a lot of people actually uh, using augments, placing them around the bedroom or playing the piano in peace out in public, but it's still some ways off because the headset still needs to be lighter with longer battery life. Plus it needs to become more socially acceptable. But for now, the Quest 3 is a really good VR headset for gaming for most people, especially when Apple's upcoming Vision Pro headset is a whooping six to seven times more expensive at $3,499. So only a small niche of people will be able to purchase that headset. But this one though, this one is for the masses. It's got its flaws for sure, but it doesn't take away from the incredible experience. And hats off honestly to Meta. This is an innovative product that's pushing boundaries and it's exciting to see the AR and VR space continue to grow. And if you made it to the end of this video, drop the code word comment augment and I'll give it a like for watching until the very end. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and consider subscribing for more tech content. Check out this video over here too, where I wore AR glasses to work for a week. It was an interesting experience. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.